Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today with a long-awaited video about my laser cutter. One information at the beginning. I have divided this video into several chapters, which you can find down in the video description, so you can jump directly to the topic which you are interested in most. First of all, we have the heart of this laser machine, the laser tube here. It has to be cooled with water, and so you can see here the inlet tube for the water and the outlet tube of the water. So always is a constant stream of water flowing around this tube here. The beam comes out here at the front and falls onto the first mirror here, which will reflect the beam 90 degrees to in this direction here. Then it meets the second mirror, which will also reflect at 90 degrees to this direction here. And it takes this way and comes here to the third mirror, which will reflect it down through the lens inside this nozzle here and onto the working surface. Dust extraction is a really important topic at this machine. This should be clear. You can't run any jobs with this machine inside your room without any extraction. This uh, wouldn't be good for your health. Everything you cut, if it's cardboard, paper, wood or acrylic, produces smoke or gas and uh, these you don't want to have inside your room. So you always need the possibility to get these things out. And the first thing is that you have a fan that can pull out a high volume of air out of the machine and you need uh, a way to get this out of your room. In my case, a window or if you can do it, then make a hole in your wall or something like this and lead the tube out there. But if you don't have this possibility, you can't run a laser. The lens inside of the laser nozzle here has to be free from any dust. And you produce dust when you are cutting things here. The dust is going up into the nozzle and could settle on the lens and, and this could cause damage to your lens. And to protect the lens from these damages, you need an air resist. The compressed air arrives here, goes into the nozzle and comes out down here at the bottom. And this forces the smoke out of the nozzle. And in addition of this, it will also blow away every dust that is inside of your cutting area, which would prevent the laser beam from getting down to the bottom of your cut. When you're thinking at buying a laser, you should make yourself clear what do you want to do with it. In my case, I want to make cuts and engravings with this laser. First of all, I want to cut acrylic and thin plywood, and in second instance, paper and cardboard. And when it comes to the engraving, I want to engrave painted acrylics and plywood. And you should make yourself clear what you can't do with a laser. You can't cut or engrave metal. There are some paints, really expensive paints, that um, can help you engrave a little bit of metal, but these are really expensive and at the end this isn't um, the right machine to do this. You can't cut thick pieces of wood, for example 18 mm plywood, without um, coming out with a very black burning mark around this. And you can't engrave with a constant depth, like uh, I have shown here on my CNC. For example, if you want to engrave 0.4 millimeters deep on a special area. The laser engraves with a beam and this beam has a little bit of uh, variance in it. And every area you engrave with this has a little, I think, waveform on it at the end it is burned away and you can't uh, achieve the same quality that you would achieve with a router bit of a CNC. 
And here we come to a point why I still have my CNC and the laser cutter parallel to each other. Because cutting is a really fast job on this machine, but when it comes to engraving to a special depth or cutting out plywood with no burning marks, then I still use my CNC. So I have made my decision that it should be a CO2 laser and I found it a little bit overwhelming how many different models were there on the market. And I want to give you a little overview of the different models I have looked at and some of the facts about them. First of all, there is the K40 laser. You find many, many uh, offers there, for example, on eBay, just uh, some colors are changed, but all in all, they are nearly all the same model. The K40 has a 40 watt laser tube and a working area of 300 by 200 millimeters and a cutting bed that is fixed in one position. Then we have a 50 watt laser with a working area of 500 by 300 millimeters. And this is the first type of these lasers that comes with an adjustable D-axis. The 60 watt laser has a working area of 700 by 500 millimeters. And most of these models are delivered on a movable stand. The 80 watt laser comes in the same case like the 60 watt laser and has the same working area of 700 by 500 millimeters. But because of the little longer laser tube, it has an additional box at the side. The 100 watt laser comes with a working area of 900 by 600 millimeters and in an even bigger case. And last but not least, we have the 130 watt laser. It comes with a working area of 1400 millimeters by 900 millimeters and a really big case. So what are the things you get when you are buying such a laser? Of course, the laser itself, such an exhaust fan to get rid of all the smoke inside of the laser, the blue tube here, not this white exhaust fan here, this blue tube uh, is to connect the laser with this fan and then get the smoke out of your room here. You will get a small aquarium a water pump to get in the cooling water and this membrane pump here to get air to the laser nozzle. And of course some accessories like the manual uh, tools, screwdrivers and so on. I wasn't satisfied with many of the components um, that come with a laser or how it uh, was built up and so I have added some modifications or uh, changed some uh, parts here. And I want to give you now an overview of all the modifications I have done until now to my laser. The first thing I have added was such an ampere meter. And I think this is a really important device to find out how much power runs through your laser tube. The manufacturer says that the tube should be run at or below 20 milliamperes. And running the tube at 100%, for example, doesn't mean that uh, the tube is running at 20 milliamperes. And here you can see the list of values I have achieved. You can see below 10% my laser isn't firing. And then it goes up. And the 20 milliampere are reached already at 65%. The 70% already produces 21 milliamperes. So to save my tube and ensure a long life period, I wouldn't run my laser tube over 65%. The laser pointer that was installed at the nozzle to find out where the cut will be later was completely useless and even more when the z-axis was moved up and down. And so I installed 
this beam combiner here which is a laser pointer that goes onto a combining mirror which reflects this laser here but also let's pass the laser beam of the tube here and so this beam of this laser pointer takes the same pass as the laser of the laser tube and so they will always come down at the same place on uh, your working surface. And this makes the estimation of where a cut will be or where your nozzle is uh, placed actually very easy. The next modification was the exhaust fan. I have changed this exhaust fan here that comes with the machine to uh, this inline exhaust fan that you build in when you are exhausting a room, for example. So first of all, this component is smaller and is more easy to install here in my room. And the other reason, and I think the most important reason, is the noise that this one here makes. We can make a little test here. First of all, this exhaust fan here. When I would be here for a longer time, I wouldn't work without any ear protection. And now we come to this exhaust fan here. A much more quiet fan, I think, and with nearly the same volume that it moves. For the exhaust fan, I have built this plate here from OSB. And there is a three printed inlet here, so I can uh, tighten this tube here uh, outside of this plate here. I've mounted these to one block so I can uh, grab it and I can then open my window and set this plate inside and all the smoke and dust can go outside. There is a filter of active carbon added inside here, I think it will reduce the smell and uh, smoke a little bit that goes outside here. I have a 3D printed um, net here and so the filter can't fall down here. The laser tube needs to be cooled with water during the work and this here was my first uh, cooling method. Just a bucket full of uh, distilled water and with this aquarium pump inside. Two tubes running out, one inlet, one outlet of the water and they are running into um, the laser. This worked really well and I think this could have been enough uh, even for the, the future. But I have noticed something and this is this aquarium pump only uh, was enough to heat up the water inside here. So even if I don't cut anything with a laser, the water gets uh, warmer and warmer. And you shouldn't go uh, over temperatures of um, 25 degrees Celsius. And this could have been reached by only running this pump here. And so when there were some projects where I have cut bigger sheets of plywood, for example, then I was running uh, to uh, some limits here. And this pump stopped working even from time to time now, so I think uh, it starts to break down here and it doesn't look good even uh, after four months already. And so I had to think uh, for a different uh, solution here. Many users of the community are still using this and when the water gets uh, too warm they are adding some ice packs for example. So this can be a solution I think when you are using a good water pump here. But now I have switched to an industrial chiller and uh, this chiller cools down the water when it reaches a special temperature level then it gets cooled down the two degrees 
the chiller goes to standby again and when it reaches uh, this temperature level it starts again and so on. And this works really well and even the pressure of the pump inside of this um, chiller here is better and so I was able to get rid of any small air bubbles that are left in the laser tube that this pump here couldn't get out. And so I'm, I'm really satisfied with this chill now. You should look out that you are buying a good product here. There are other companies on the market that sell these chillers for lower prices. But when you read around in the net, the producer of this chiller here seems to be ahead of all the others. So you should carefully think what you are buying. This membrane pump is also replaced and this has improved my cut quality a lot. And I think it comes from the kind the air comes out here. A compressor is producing a solid air stream like pfft. But this pump here makes an, a stream like And so there are many pulses of air coming out. And I think this kind of air and the additional lack of pressure is the cause that not enough dust, especially when you are cutting wood, is blown out of this uh, cut. And so um, the laser beam can't get to the ground of the material. Air is now supplied by my compressor. I'm using this to get air here all in the shop for my nail gun or in the painting room for my spray gun. And so I have routed an additional tube uh, to the CNC room. The air goes here to this pressure reducer. And with this, I can um, adjust the amount of pressure that um, goes to the laser. When I'm cutting and especially cutting wood, then I'm using a higher pressure than when I'm just engraving. With this valve here, I can stop the air from running to the laser completely so um, that not all the time air is uh, coming out of the laser and the compressor has to work too much. I have added this six millimeter air tube here and I have changed the inlet of the laser so um, that I can arrive with this tube there. And I have added this uh, air assist kit here. The air from the compressor is coming in here into a pneumatic solenoid valve and that lets me control the uh, on and off of the air by my software. So here I have a valve that lets a little bit of air flow always through the nozzle to keep it free from dust. And then the software can open the valve completely when all the air is needed during a cut. And here you can see a result of the air modifications. On the left you can see my tries to cut through this 3mm HDF board with the uh, old membrane pump. There is a lot of uh, dust on the surface here and needless to say that the cuts didn't go through and it doesn't matter with which power I tried this. On the right you can see the cuts with a new air setup. I have uh, increased the air a little bit until this point and uh, played a little bit with the power and here you can see two cuts straight through the material and nearly nothing is left here on the surface. So now that you know the overall function of this laser here and, and the items I have added to it, I want to give you a quick overview of what you have to do before you can make your first cuts. Let's assume that you have connected all the needed accessories like the air assist, the extraction fan and the water pump. First of all, you have to check if this axis here is at exactly 90 degrees to these axis here. Most of the times I think it arrives aligned correctly, but just check it to avoid any surprises later. Then you should check the belt tension here, that uh, this belt and the belts of the other axis are tensioned well. And then you should check that uh, the cutting bed here is leveled. And to do this, you uh, move 
your laser head to different positions here on the bed and the distance of the bed to the end of the nozzle should always be the same. If it isn't, you have to modify the height at this point so um, that you end up with a leveled bed. And if your bed isn't leveled correctly, then I can take you uh, at a moment where I had to level my bed so you can see what to do then. So now finally I took my time to align the laser bed and the z-axis bed here. It is important that the distance of the bed to the lens is everywhere the same. When you are cutting small pieces then it isn't as necessary as when you cut big pieces because small pieces you align uh, your focal length and the distance of the bed to the lens and then you cut your piece in a small area. But when I now have cut a bigger piece which is 30 or maybe 50 centimeters wide then I was aware that at some point the cuts weren't as deep as on the other side of the bed. And this is mostly a good indication that the bed isn't aligned correctly. And this alignment can be done down here in the laser. So I have disassembled here and the coverings and now we can have a look inside here. So here you can see the inside of the bottom part of laser and the tensioning belt and which drives the z-axis. There at the end you can see the motor that drives this belt. Here you have the two tensioners and the four spindles that drive the z-axis up and down. By the way, when you want to bring this laser through a door then you can loosen the stand from um, the cabinet of the laser and here you can see the three screws and also on the other side that you have to loosen to uh, disassemble it and so you can bring it through a normal door. Just a short info for you. So to level the z-axis now I have loosened this belt here and now I can separately move these spindles up and down here and so I can check the distance of the bed to the lens at four different points and checking it round and round again until at every of the four points the distance to the lens is the same. And then when I'm finished with this tighten the belt back again and then it should run parallel. When this is done you come to the most trickiest part of the alignment the alignment of the mirrors. All in all you should set the mirrors that the laser beam hits every mirror somewhere in the middle. That's a only rough spoon. You start at the first mirror there and this is the easiest one because you just have to ensure that the beam of the laser tube just hits the mirror in the middle. So you have to modify maybe the height of the mirror a little bit maybe the rotation, the position, front and back, but that's all. Also you should check that your laser tube is leveled. Then there comes the alignment of the second mirror and here comes the tricky part. The laser has to hit the mirror at the same point when the mirror is full at the back or full at the front. And when you have achieved this then it comes to the third mirror and Again, the laser beam must hit the mirror at the same point when the mirror is full here on the left and full on the right. The laser then has to leave the nozzle in the middle so um, that you ensure that it hits the lens in the middle. Again, this is a really complicated topic and I have spent many evenings with this and I have linked you the one video down in the video description that was an eye-opener for me that explained me how I have to adjust the mirrors and how much I have to adjust them so uh, that the beam is hitting them always at the same point. And the last thing you have to do is to determine the focal distance of your lens. Every lens has a point where it cuts um, the best and to determine this you could lay um, 
for example, a paper or a piece of plywood diagonal underneath your laser nozzle and uh, set it to a position that it can run a cut from here up to here and the point where the cut is the thinnest there is your focal length and the distance of the surface of this point to the underside of your nozzle can be used to make a template and this template I have here and when I want to start a cut or an engraving I lay my piece that I want to cut or engrave here on the surface and then adjust my bed height here so that the piece here fits exactly between the surface of my uh, workpiece and the underside of the nozzle and then I know that everything is aligned correctly for the cut. Now that all your hardware setup is done, your last task is to find out the parameters for your cuttings. And there are two parameters you have to find. The first is the speed and the second the power. The speed is given in millimeter per second and the power in percent. And you have to define these parameters for every material you want to cut or engrave. And so I would recommend to make a test pattern every time you cut a material for the first time. In my case, I have drawn three rectangles and the different colors are standing for uh, the different parameters I will use for the cutting. The first one is cut with 15 millimeter per second and a power of 15%. The second one with 20% and the third with 25%. You can cut more patterns with other parameters and your goal is to find out the parameters where you cut fully through this material. And then you have to make a compromise between the time you need to cut out things and the power you run through your laser tube. My goal is to extend the lifetime of the tube as much as I can, but without letting the cuts run too slow. And so in my case for three millimeter acrylic, my values are 15 millimeters per second and 25%. But these can be different values on your machine. So this was an overview of working with a laser cutter and the different models. I hope you found this video useful if you are planning to buy such a machine. Leave a comment below if you have already bought one of these machines or maybe built one of these by yourself. What have you bought it for and what projects have you done already with this? Let's share your experience with the community. And if you don't want to miss the new projects with this machine, then you should subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.